Hello, uh, Pre-Calculus 11 students. Uh, this is Mr. Yoon here, and um, I'm making this uh, video lesson for uh, Section 8.4, which, co which covers uh, geometric series. Now, uh, in your workbook, um, a geometric series uh, is the sum of a geometric sequence. So, uh, so last class, we were looking at geometric sequences, and for this class, uh, we will once again be working with geometric sequences, and this time we want to be um, finding the sum of the geometric sequence. Uh, so if I take a look at this very simple example below here, um, I have four terms, uh, 1, 5, 25, and 125. And this is definitely a geometric sequence because we're multiplying each term by 5. Now this one's a pretty uh, easy uh, sum to figure out because we only have four terms. So if I add up all the terms, I'm going to get, well, this is going to be uh, 150 plus the first two terms, which will be 6. So my total here will be 156. So that example was pretty easy. Um, when I'm working with more difficult sequences, um, I may not be able to add up each individual term. So uh, there is another formula that will help us find um, the uh, sum of a geometric sequence. And let me, uh, let me uh, talk about that formula right now. Uh, so here is one formula that can help you find the sum of a geometric sequence. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to write down what uh, I'm going to write down what each variable means. So just uh, give me a second here, please. Okay, so um, here we are. Um, if I have the the variables S N A and N and R. Um, these are very similar to uh, the terms that were mentioned in uh, some of the previous lessons where SN is the sum of the sequence, A is the first term, N is the total number of terms, and R is the common ratio. Uh, R can be found by taking the second term and dividing by the first term. Uh, there's, there's also another formula that will be uh, useful in finding the, the, the sum of the sequence here. And uh, another formula for finding the sum um, is written as SN equals to a minus r times l divided by 1 minus r. So uh, the only uh, thing that's different about this uh, this formula is that if you're given the last term, then uh, if you know the last term in your sequence, then this formula can also be used to find your total sum. Okay. So if you're given the last term, go ahead and use this formula. If you're not given the last term, you, you can use the, the, the first formula that's given to you. Okay, let's work through uh, a few problems now. Sorry, I'm making uh, this video here at uh, three o'clock in the morning here, so I'm a little bit uh, a little bit worn out here. So uh, not much energy in putting uh, this video together here. Okay, so for this very first example here, I know that my first term is going to be two, so that means a equals to two, and uh, for my common ratio r, um, it looks like I'm going by 3 each time. I'm multiplying each term by 3, so my common ratio should be 3. And um, I'm given my last term here, so my last term is uh, 1458. So this means I can use formula number 2, and formula number 2 was SN equals to A minus RL divided by 1 minus R. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how many terms are in my sequence, but um, it really doesn't matter because I know my last term. So if I know my last term, I'm definitely able to find the sum as well. So if I plug the numbers into my um, into my formula here, I have two minus three times l, which is fourteen fifty eight again, all divided by uh, one minus r, which is three. And if I go ahead and uh, put those numbers into my calculator, I get two thousand one hundred eighty six. All right, so that is my sum of my uh, geometric sequence for example number one. All right, let's move on to example number two here. Uh, example number two is once again asking what is the sum of the first eight terms of the geometric series three, six, twelve, going on eight more times or five more times actually. Okay, so once again, let's analyze uh, this uh, sequence here. Uh, my first term here is three, so a would equal to three. And what is my common ratio? Well, my common ratio looks like uh, it's going to be 2 because uh, I'm multiplying each term by uh, 2 there. So my common ratio has to be 2. And my number of terms here will be 8 because I want to find the sum of the first 8 terms. Okay, so anytime you're given this uh, number of terms here, uh, you want to use your first formula, which is SN 
equals to a times 1 minus r to the n, all divided by 1 minus r. And my value of n here is going to be 8. So this is the sum of the first 8 terms equals to, well, the first term will be 3 times 1 minus r, which is 2 to the power of 8. Close the bracket, all divided by 1 minus r, which is 2. And then we need to go to our calculators here, and we need to evaluate this expression right here. And I recommend that um, it's I recommend that you evaluate to the power eight because uh, sometimes your calculator uh, may not be able to do this all in one step here. So uh, if you go ahead and uh, kind of simplify this for your calculator, this would be three onto one minus two to the power of eight, all divided by negative two. Sorry, one minus two is negative one, and uh, that total sum will be uh, seven hundred and sixty-five. Okay, so there is my sum for my second sequence there. Okay, let's move on here. Example number three. Let me just uh, erase this right here and then uh, we'll try to zoom in here because we, I have uh, I have a geometric, uh, sorry, I have a, an interesting question for my next problem here. Okay, so in the next problem here, I'm given this, um, this uh, sigma notation here and that means I'm adding a bunch of terms and um, this k equals to 1 means uh, this is where I am starting, right? Okay, so what we can do is let's go ahead and expand this. Once we ex expand this uh, sequence here, um, I can find my first term and my common ratio. So we need to find our first two terms to get started here. So let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, if k equals to 1 here, then my first term is going to be 3 times negative 2 to the power of, well, k, since k equals to 1, I'm going to have 1 minus 1, that's my first term, plus, I have to have a plus sign because uh, the sigma notation means I'm creating a sum here, and uh, if I continue expanding, um, I'm going to have 3 times negative 2, but this time my value of k here has gone up by 1, so this is going to be 2 minus 1, sorry, I'll put this in red here, 2 minus 1, and let me go ahead and just do my third term even though I don't need it. But uh, I'm writing down the third term is just good practice in terms of expanding the sequence here. So 3 times negative 2 to the power of, now k is going to be 3. And uh, my exponent here is uh, the minus 1. Okay, so uh, here are my first uh, three terms here. So let's go ahead and evaluate each term here. If I have uh, negative 2 to the power of 1 minus 1, that's going to be um, negative 2 to the power 0, and anything to the power 0 is going to be 1. So this is 3 times 1, because once again, uh, anything to the power of 0 there is always going to be just 1. Plus, then I have 3 times, well, what is uh, negative 2 to the power of, well, this is basically negative 2 to the power of 1 here, so that's going to be 3 times negative 2. And uh, my third term here is going to be uh, plus 3. And um, negative 2 to the power of uh, 2 this time is going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which is going to be 4. All right, so there it is. Let's go write, let's write out our first uh, three terms here. This is going to be 3. Uh, this is going to be minus 6. And this is going to be plus 12. Okay. So just by looking at this uh, sequence here, I know that my first term is going to be 3. Uh, what is my common ratio? Well, I take my second term and divide by my first term, and this is going to be negative 6 divided by 3, which is going to be negative 2. So my common ratio is going to be negative 2. My first term is going to be 3. And then I also need to find the number of terms. Okay, so what is my total number of terms? And in order to find out my total number of terms is that I need to look at my k equals to 1 and my 10 there. Um, basically, this tells you when to stop. So since uh, the top is 10 and my bottom is 1, the number of terms I have is actually going to be 10. Okay, so I take 10 minus this 1, and then I add 1, and that's going to give you 10 total terms. Okay, so my value of n will be 10. Okay, let's go ahead and plug the numbers into uh, my formula now. So this is going to be uh, Sn equals to a minus a r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. So I know I, have, I know I have 10 terms in my sequence, so this will be s of 10 equals to 3 minus 3 times negative 2 to the power of 10 all over 1 minus negative 2. Now you can go ahead and just uh, simplify a few things here. This is s of 10. This will be 3 minus 3. 
And if I evaluate this negative 2 to the power of 10, that's going to give me a value of 1024. And then I want to divide this by 3 because uh, 1 minus negative 2 would be 1 plus 2, which gives you 3. And this will give me a total sum of negative 1023. So there's my sum for the sequence there. All right, let's move on to example number four now. Okay, so uh, write the geometric series 6, 18, 54, 162, and 486 using sigma notation with uh, index k equals to one. Okay, so remember, uh, sigma notation means um, I wanna write using this symbol right here, okay? Now, before I start uh, with this problem, if I go back to my previous problem here, which is example number three, let's just erase this. Um, I'm going to just uh, rewrite this expression below just to analyze it. So uh, from example number three, example number three, uh, the problem I had there was the sigma notation of 10 and uh, I have k equals to 1 and uh, 3 times negative 2 to the power of k minus 1. Now when you're writing a geometric sequence using sigma notation, um, you will always have your um, you will always have a variable in your exponent okay so uh, this is a, a variable in your exponent okay so all geometric sequences it's very important that you have a variable in your exponent now this part right here uh, negative 2 that's your common ratio okay so for geometric sequence, make sure you have a common ratio being raised to a variable. Once you do that, that will help you get started with most uh, geometric sequences if you're trying to write in sigma notation. Okay, so just remember that fact when you're doing a problem like this. All right, let's go ahead and erase all this, and let's go ahead and now start this problem here. Um, so sigma notation means I need to write this. Uh, I want to write with the index k equals to 1, so this will be k equals to 1. Okay, um, I know that I have... Here's one, two, three, four, five terms. So my top part will be five, okay, since I have five terms there. Now, what is your common ratio R? All right, so if you want to find your common ratio R, you take your second term divided by your first term, and that's going to be 18 divided by 6, which is going to be 3. So I know that my common ratio is going to be 3. And remember, I said in my, uh, my previous steps there that for a geometric sequence, uh, you must have your comma ratio being raised to a variable. So let's put a variable right here, which is k. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and write the first term uh, using k equals to 1, if I plug in 1 here, so this will be 3 to the power of 1. So this will, give me, this will give me my first term as a 3. Notice that my first term is not 3. It's actually a 6. So in order to uh, change my 3 to a 6, let's just put a 2 here in front. And then that will change my first term into a 6. And uh, that will, once again, be your, uh, I think this would work here because your second term is going to be 2 times 3 to the power of 2. And this expression here is 2 times 9, which is going to be 18. So this uh, indeed will work because my second term is now going to be 18. And that definitely matches uh, the sequence that's given to my problem. So there it is. Here is my answer right here. Once again, my comma ratio is being raised to a variable, and that will help you get started with these geometric series when you're writing in sigma notation. All right, uh, moving on now, example number uh, five here. Uh, the last two examples, uh, we have a few word problems here, so a few applications. So example number five, I'm being paid uh, one penny on the first day, uh, two cents on the second day, four cents on the third day and eight cents on the fourth day and so on. And I want to know how much money will I have at the end of a 30 day month? All right. So very good uh, question here. And uh, these are Mr. Wong's notes. So bling, bling, bling. Um, this is a very good. Uh, I wish this would happen to me one day. <laughs> OK, so um, let's uh, write out my terms here. So I have 0 0.01, which is my first term. Plus, I'm going to put an A here, indicating that's my first term. And then my second term is going to be 0 0.02, which is T2, plus uh, 0 0.04, which is T3, and then plus 0 0.08, which is uh, T, T4. Okay, so clearly my, um, clearly my first term is going to be 0 0.01. And um, 
what is my common ratio R? Well, that's going to be T2 divided by T1, which is going to be 0 0.02 divided by uh, 0 0.01, and that's going to give you a value of 2 there. So my common ratio is going to be 2. I know my first term is 0 0.01. And uh, since I have a 30-day month here, that means N has to be 30. All right, so all we're doing here now is we're just plugging the numbers into our formula, which is SN equals to A minus A to the RN divided by 1 minus R. This will be sum of 30 terms equals to A, which is uh, 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01. My common ratio is 2 to the power of 30, all divided by 1 minus 2. Now, I went ahead and did this in my calculator, and if you do this in your calculator, I think you get a really big number here. I mean, you're not just getting like $1,000 or something. You're actually getting, um, it's over $10 million here, uh, 10737 comma fourteen four hundred eighteen dollars and twenty three cents okay so that's well over ten million dollars here which is definitely more money than you'll ever need in your lifetime so yeah hopefully uh, one day this might happen to you it definitely won't happen to me anytime soon but uh, there it is uh, over ten million dollars if you're getting paid um, if you start off with a penny one day and then if it doubles every single day then uh, eventually you're making the big bucks okay let's move on to uh, the final problem now uh, this is a basketball problem, so I, I know that we have a few uh, basketball uh, students in the class. So hopefully this is a good question for, for you guys. Um, so for example, number six, um, I have a basketball and it's being dropped from a, a truck with a height of five meters. Okay, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of words there, but basically, uh, let's just say we have um, this little cliff here. And I have my uh, orange basketball here. And uh, it's being, well, basically it's being dropped from a height of five meters, okay? So here's my original, here's my uh, beginning scenario here. And basically once the ball is dropped, uh, the ball will rise to four-fifths of the height from which it fell after each bounce, okay? And the total vertical distance the ball has traveled at the moment it hits the ground for the eighth time to the nearest tenth of a meter is. Okay, so basically uh, the ball will be bouncing and then when it bounces, it will go back up, but it only goes up to about four-fifths of its original height, and then comes back down, and then goes back to four-fifths of, uh, of its previous height, goes back down, goes up, down, I think, okay, so it's, it's following this pattern right here, and so on. Okay, so we want to find the total vertical distance the ball um, the ball has traveled. Okay, that's an interesting problem here. <clears throat> okay, so... Now, in order to uh, in order to approach this problem here, uh, my my first term is going to be a equals to five, and the reason is I'm starting from a height of five meters, right? So since I'm starting with a height of five meters, that will be my first term, and I know that my common ratio is going to be four over five because the problem is telling me that the ball rises to four fifths of its previous height, so that means I'm multiplying each height by four fifths in order to get the new height. So that means my common ratio has to be 4 over 5, okay? And um, the number of terms I have is going to be 8 because I want to know the, the total vertical distance traveled after the 8th bounce. So I know that my uh, value, of, so my number of terms will be 8 here. Now let's go ahead and plug in these numbers into my formula and, let's, and then we'll modify it once we've uh, done our first step here. So I know that my formula is going to be SN equals to a minus a r to the power of n all divided by 1 minus r okay so I, I want to find the sum of my first eight terms which is going to be um, 5 minus 5 times r which is 4 fifths all to the power of 8 divided by 1 minus r which is 4 over 5 okay now guys what I'm going to do next is you have to realize that when the ball goes up, it travels a, um, it travels a vertical distance, but it travels the same vertical distance going down. So, uh, so after every single bounce, it travels a vertical distance up, but it must travel the same vertical distance down. So going up and down, going up and going down. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my entire sequence here, 
and I'm going to multiply this by 2 because I'm going up and down, up and down. So if I do that, if I have that in my sequence, then I need to times everything by 2. Now the only problem is, is that at the beginning of the problem, the ball is being dropped from a height of 5. Okay, so the ball is being dropped from a height of 5. It just goes down 5 meters. But it does not go back up by 5 meters, right? So the ball is definitely not going up by 5 meters. It's just falling down by 5 meters. So in order to make up for that, um, you know, because I'm multiplying everything by 2, that also means that it's going down by 5 and going up by 5. So in order to make up for that, I must subtract another 5 meters because technically I'm not going back up by 5 meters. Okay, so if I do that to my sequence here, um, that means my total sum here is going to be if I put this in my calculator here, I should get about 36.611. Okay, so this is my total vertical distance uh, traveled after the eighth bounce. And uh, the only kind of modifi modifications you need to make with this kind of formula is you need times it by two, but also subtract five because at the beginning of the problem, you're not really traveling up five and down five meters. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video here. Uh, can you please work on the following problems uh, for homework? And uh, we'll see you guys next time.